everyone, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and I'm going to be making this sweet little crescent pendant today and we're going to be using a couple different colors of pendants using a herringbone stitch and then also just a round stitch that's going to be a pattern and I'm calling this one the nebula pendant. For this pendant, if you need any of the materials as I'm going over them, we'll drop down a little menu here on the left hand side that will give you links to all the different products that are used in this video. The Nebula pendant is going to um, work great just as a single pendant or you could make multiples and stitch them together or even as a larger earring because it's really not that heavy. The main focus of this pendant is the crescent beads. To use the crescent beads, you're going to use two different colors. You can use more if you'd like and make the pendant almost reversible so that you see different colors from the front to the back. I'm going to be using two colors of the crescents. If you haven't played with the crescents yet, the crescents are a two-hole um, crescent shape or they look like a little orange slice bead um, manufactured in the Czech Republic. I'm going to be using the opaque Lila Luster and for that I'm going to need six of that color of my crescents. And then I am using the metallic violet and the metallic violet color I'm going to be using 12 of. We're going to be using 6 here of the ones that are just showing a little bit and then 12 of the crescents that are showing in the back and the front. So all together you're going to need 18 crescents total. In addition to the crescents I have my 11 O seed beads here as well as my 8 O seed beads. For my 11s, in the example that we're making together, I'm going to use two different colors, a lighter and a darker color. The lighter color is actually a permafinish lilac seed bead, which is the Toho brand of seed beads. And then I'm going to use a second darker color, which is the Lila Vega Luster color, and this is a Mayuki seed bead with a check coating on it. So I'm using those two 11 seed beads to help to give the pendant a little bit more depth. I'm going to make the pendant a little bit brighter with my 8O color. I am using a Toho 8O seed bead, so it's a little bit more of a cylinder shape rather than a rounded like a Mayuki. Either will work for this project, but I am using the Semi Glaze, which is a frosted color in the Honeydew, and that's going to kind of make this pop and make it uh, look a little floral as you're working with it. So the Nebula pendant will take all of these different bead materials in order to make the pendant. In addition to the beads that are being used, we do need some thread. I'm using 0 .006 green wildfire beading thread. The reason I'm using green is because my color tones here will match the green color very well. And where you do see the most thread will be exposed near the eights and those eights are green. So they should blend in nicely. I am using a size 10 English beading needle. If you have a 12, you can also use that, or an 11. Um, we're not using any 15 seed beads, but we are going into tight corners. So if you have a 12, you may want to have it handy in order to switch off as we get further and further and progress into our pendant. We do want to go around a fair amount of times in this pendant, so that's why I said you may want to have that extra smaller needle handy. I am working on a bead on it board, or you can work on your bead mat. It helps the beads from rolling around. And the tools that I have sitting here, in addition to my bead on it board, are my thread zap. And I have the thread zap 2 that I'm working with today. That's going to help to fuse my thread at the ends as well as cut it off the initial roll. I also have my super new glue sitting handy. And then I have a pair of pliers. The pliers are great because if you do burn rather than cut the end of your thread, these will help to make the end of it actually uh, flange out so that way it'll make it easier for you to thread your needle. We're going to start out the pendant using all of our different beads, so I'm going to start by making little piles of each of my different type of bead. We're going to make the front and the sides of the pendant and then come back and decorate it up. To get started, you want to cut about four feet, four to five feet of your beading thread, get that on your needle, and lay out little piles of your beads. So to get started with our nebula, what we're going to do is use a 15 o seed bead that I have on my mat in order to create a stop bead. That 15 o, which is just a crystal Labrador color, I'm going to take down so I have about 2 to 3 inches left at the very base of my thread and run my needle back through that 15 o two times. That's going to stop the beads from falling off the thread as I'm working and creating 
the pattern. When I start this piece, we are going to be starting it in this base strand right here with our darker of our crescent. So I'm using that metallic violet color of the crescents to kind of make it pop. That lighter pur purple there, I'm just going to put in that opaque lilac. I'm going to put that right in the center there. So to start out, we're starting out with six of our crescents, and we want the crescents all facing in the same direction. The easiest thing to do is to line your crescents up so that they're facing in a dome shape. You have your six crescents, they're all facing the same exact direction. Then you know which side and which hole you need to put your needle into to start. I am gonna use that uh, brighter purple here in the middle. We're gonna use the darker purple on the edges and then I'm gonna go back to the brighter purple on the ends. So the brighter purple here, that perma finish in the lilac 11 o is what I'm gonna start with. I put on one of those and I'm gonna go into the left hand hole of my crescent and pick it up. Separate each of your six crescents with one of those 11s. And after you have them all on, we let them drop down to the very end of the thread. Because I started with an 11, I am going to end with a crescent bead. So I have the six crescents on. When you see them on the needle, you can see that they're all facing in the same exact direction. So they have those crescents lining up nicely as you're working with them. Right now we're just stringing through that first hole. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a round circle out of that. To create that round circle, we're gonna sew back through the first 11 -0. So my needle's coming in the thread around in a circle. It's gonna start at that stop bead and go into the 11 -0 that I first put on my project with the needle coming out between the 11 -0 and my crescent bead. You can see now that that little loop has been created. So you can see how it has that loop and the crescents are going to want to naturally kind of pop out and not cooperate. So you can see it a little bit tighter right there and then we're gonna be spacing them out. You can, if you want to, push that closer to the stop bead so you're not wasting any thread. And what I'm gonna do now is actually jump up to my second hole of my initial crescents. When I jump up to the second hole of the crescents, I'm actually gonna be adding my eight O's and my next crescent in line. To jump up from the bottom hole near that bead to the top hole, I came out after my first 11 0. I'm going to go through that first crescent that I put on my project. After my thread comes out that bottom hole of the crescent, I'm going to back the thread so it's going the opposite direction, back towards the stop bead, and go through the top hole of the crescent. You will see a little bit of thread exposed on the side of the crescent. Don't worry about that because you won't see it as we continue to work. We're now gonna go in and add our six crescents in the lighter purple color. These crescents, when they come into view, will actually just be the sides of the crescents or the tips of the crescents rather than the full show of that little half circle. Once I have my thread coming out that top hole of the crescent, you can see I kind of laid it out in my hand so it looks like the center of my nebula pendant. In between each crescent, I'm going to add another crescent, and on the sides of those crescent, I'm going to use that Toho 8. I'm going to pick up the honeydew bead, and I'm going to sew through one of my crescent beads. When you're sewing through your crescent bead, you want to make sure that they're going to sit correctly, that the arch side is going to sit facing up. If you want to, you can actually face the crescents the opposite way, face down, and sew through that same left-hand side hole. Then you'll know that the crescent is going to face downward. So if you want to, you can shape those crescents, again facing down this time, and all six in a row. After my crescent, I add another eight, and I sew through the top hole of the next baseline crescent in line. So that metallic violet crescent gets put in. Next again, I add 
my eight, my crescent, and an eight, and sew through the next crescent that's empty. So you can see it's starting to take shape. These crescents will really start to turn as we add the next layer, but I'm gonna continue adding my crescents with the eights on either side in between that first initial row of my crescent beads. I have three done and I have three more to add. As I add in the last crescent, I'm going to sew through that first blue crescent, the first 8O, and the first purple crescent that I added in this second row of crescents. Just like I did on the start, when I go to step up, I'm coming out one of the crescents that I just added, and I'm gonna go through the crescent going the opposite direction, stepping up to the second hole of that same crescent. Again, a little bit of thread is gonna be exposed on the side of the crescent, which you won't really see as we decorate the bead. The next row of crescents is very similar to the first row. What I'm gonna be doing instead is going backwards. So this time here, I'm gonna be adding in my purple ones again, and in between each purple, I'm gonna add my eight O's. Again, you want the purple ones to fit correctly, so we're gonna turn them so they are face up and get your six in line. Add an eight and a crescent and an eight. Just like we did the previous row, we're gonna go into the lighter purple crescent here, catching the second empty hole. And you can see that's gonna add that second crescent into place. Those crescents are gonna sit almost one on top of the other, and the purple crescent here is going to fold back. So when you're using that lilac crescent, it's actually gonna fold back to the side, and you're gonna see it more as a spike. In between each of the lilac crescents, you're gonna continue adding those eight OC beads, your next crescent and an eight, and continue all the way around the circle, adding them in to the crescents to mimic the first hole of that same crescent bead. When you add the last crescent in, it's going to look a little bit like a jumbled mess. The first sign here has the 11 O's nicely placed next to those metallic violet crescents. The next one here, those crescents are flopping all around. We're gonna go in and the last step is actually to create that double-sided little portion of the pendant. Right now to finish, I have my last crescent that I'm adding on. I'm gonna sew through the first of the violet crescents, go through the 8 seed bead, and go through the very first of that metallic crescent that I added on this third row of crescents. Just like we've been doing, I'm gonna step up while coming out of that crescent. I'm gonna turn my thread back the opposite direction and go through the empty hole of that crescent bead. Again, a little bit of thread will be exposed on the side. And at this point too, I give a nice tight pull on my thread because I do not want um, a lot of thread exposed. If you have your stop bead there, you can kind of pull that thread down so that it's coming out the back of the project. As I go around now, I'm gonna add that lighter C bead in between each of my crescent beads. So I'm gonna go and add them each, pulling that whole project in. So that permafinished lilac gets added in between that empty hole of the third row of crescents. We're gonna add six of our beads between you can see I almost pinched the project to keep it down because it is going to be one on top of the other. This is where I said you can, if you'd like, make it double-sided. That one side would be a different color than the other. As you spin around, adding your 11s, you want to make sure not to get caught and have any thread exposed on the crescents that are still there. So you wanna make sure to get nice and tight in there. As I add my final seed bead, I'm going through that first crescent, through the first 11 out, and out that second crescent there. I'm 
when I pull tight, you're going to be able to see then those seed beads right in the middle on the front and the back. Both sides are going to mimic one another. The crescents at the top, the two metallic violet, will sit a little bit over top of one another. They'll get spread out as we work on them, that they'll see a little bit of distance between the two. Right now we have the base of the pendant done, and what we're actually going to do is we're going to go in and build up the pendant with some seed beads. And it's going to decorate the outer edge as well as make the base a little bit um, bigger so that way it makes a little bit more substantial pendant. The first thing I'm going to do is decorate over top of the crescent and join into the eight O's. This creates a little pico trim that sits right in between the front of the crescent. From there then we're going to kind of create the back and join them together with the eights. Currently I need to get my needle from the interior of that metallic out to my 8 OC bead. To do that my thread is coming out of one of my crescents I'm going to go back along that crescent and go back through an 8-0. Again, the thread will be exposed along the side of the crescent and my needle will be exiting from an 8. When I'm exiting the 8, I'm going to do my little pico trim, which is those three seed beads, and I'm choosing the darker color to do that little trim. So I have my three seed beads on. I'm going to go through the next 8 hopping over my crescent. And if you can, there's different threads that are going to be going through. You want to try to stay to the top of those threads. So you can see those three beads are decorating. When you get to the crescent, you're going to sew through the crescent, through that metallic, over to the next 8 and out. Once I'm there, I add my three seed beads again, and sew through the eight. If you can at the same time, showing through the eight, you can sew through the crescent and the next eight as well. You can see that starts that little pico trim. Three go on, and this pattern continues the whole way around the start of this pendant. So right now this is gonna be the top of the pendant. So if you are doing two colors, um, you want it to turn and make sure that you're at the top of the pendant. Continuing around, we'll get our little pico trim above all six of our crescent beads. I've put the last three seed beads in place right here on the pico trim, gone through the eight, the crescent, and the eight. That's going to bring my needle out right at the start of the first little trim that I created. What I'm going to do now is flip over to the back side, and I'm actually going to go through the 8-0 right behind it, as well as the crescent bead, coming out that metallic lilac, or violet, I'm sorry, crescent bead. When I'm coming out of the crescent beads, I'm going to mimic that little pico trim at the top. Instead of going through the 8s, I'm going to be connecting it through each of my crescent beads. I want to make sure that I'm at the top hole of those crescents. I'm going to flip over to the back here, and I'm going to add seven beads instead of three. I am picking up the lighter seed bead in that group of seven, and sewing from one of my metallic violet crescents to the next metallic violet crescent, always making sure I'm going through that top outer hole. Then continuing around the crescents, we're just picking up those seven beads. Again, I'm using that lighter color. You can use a color variation, it's up to you. The first one I did all the same color. I have those seven beads on, and I'm going to that next crescent. So instead of doing the eights this time, we're going to the crescents. I do push the seed beads back, so they're just a little bit further back, but when you lay it on the front now, you can see that lighter color kind of popping out that you can have a little bit of a view of from the back to the front. Continue around, adding seven seed beads, connecting just between those two crescent beads. 
After adding in my last group of my seven beads here, I sewed through the first of the crescents that my thread was coming out of. To add the base, I'm going to be adding a rounded circle here around the points of those six little V's that we created. To add those points, I do want to sew up through those beads here, and I'm going to come out the fourth bead in line. That's going to be the point. That's why we did an odd count and we did seven beads, because you always want to come out that center bead as we're working. As we're going around these little points here, we're going to be adding in some seed beads. To add in the seed beads, you're going to be adding three of your 11 O's, two eights, and three 11s. I chose to do this with my darker color so it sits kind of in between the sides of the bead here. You can see when you pop it to the front here how it's going to sit. So you're just going to see that bead a little bit to the exterior. Again, when I come back, I'm just going to stay to the back side now. Three elevens, two eights, three elevens. And sew through. So I'm going to continue the whole way around as we load on our groupings here of our eights and our elevens, picking up that top pointed bead or the fourth bead in line in each of our rows. As I add in my last grouping of beads, I'm going to sew through that 11 that we were coming out of, as well as through the three first 11s in that Lila Vega color. And I want my thread and needle to come out between the first group of my two 80C beads. In the sample piece, I went ahead and I put another 8-0 seed bead to create a little point. If you want to, you can do an 8-0. I'm going to actually switch to an 11-0 here as we're working with it. After I add the 11, I come straight down to the next portion and sew right along my line of seed beads coming out the next 8. When I pull, that creates a little point there. I'm going to go the whole way around, adding that little point in between the beads. The reason we're adding this in after the fact is because it's going to sit more pointed than if you would have added it in between the eights in the first time around. It creates a little bit more of a V because it's pulling it between the two beads rather than beside them. That creates our little center peak there and that little point. Continuing adding all of those single 11s in. This is where I was saying if you want to you can switch to a, a size 12 needle. I'm having no problem going through with a size 10 and adding those little points. After the points are added, go in and connect the top to the bottom one more time and have that little raised look exaggerated by adding in some more of our eights. Adding in my last little peak, I'm going to sew through those first three beads, through my 11 at the base there, and through the next 11. That creates my six little points along the baseline. To actually join the two pieces now together and to raise that back a little bit, I'm going to be adding my seed beads here in the side. If you want, you can add eight O's or you can add 11 O's. If you're doing eight O's in that green color, I'm going to add two of the eight O's and then sew through that top of the Pico trim. I want to bring a little bit more of that light color of the 11s in, so what I'm going to do is actually use three 11 O's in place of my two 8s. So through that Pico trim, you can see that connection point there. Three more 11s, 
and I'm gonna spiral through the bottom basically and re or come to the bottom here and re sew through all of those beads that I was just coming out of. So I'm going around in a circle, sewing through the first bead before the point, the second bead after the point. And that's gonna connect that top and bottom. You can see here the variation and it's nice to show you the difference um, using the two different side beads and how you can actually make the project look a little bit different. Continuing over, I wanna get to the portion here where the beads are going to be put into the next Pico trim. To get there, we're just gonna sew right along the line of the beads from that base row. When I get to the middle, I do wanna skip over that 11-0 that's in the middle. So my needle is actually going below the 11-0. That's gonna make sure that that 11-0 still stays a point. If you are using eights at the base, same deal, you wanna skip that one. I'm gonna sew the whole way over them through that middle purple bead and out the first purple bead on the side. Once you're coming out that Lila Luster, Lila Vega Luster right after that uh, middle bead, you're gonna add your three metallic 11 O's or your two 8 O's. Sew through the center of the Pico trim, add three more beads and circle down around the base, going through the bead right before that center peak, and then sewing right along the line to get to your next Pico trim. And that connects the top to the bottom again. So you can see I'm going through connecting that top to the bottom, the whole way around the circle, coming out the bead after the center bead, adding my three beads and basically creating a round or um, we're actually doing a uh, little stitch there coming around through and going back to the next Pico trim. Adding all those three beads right there in place or two if you're choosing to highlight your 8-0 color. As we add our last three beads, I'm going to sew up through all those purple beads there just as if I was getting ready to do my next line and instead of skipping past that little Pico trim 11 -0, that's going to be exactly where I add my little herringbone bale there. To add my bale I am going to sew through that 11 -0 seed bead and come out the bale here, I just had some 15 O's that are sitting, were sitting on my uh, mat. I'm gonna actually be using just that same purple color of my 11's. Let me dump some more of those out. To do the herringbone bale, I'm coming out of that 11 O's seed bead that's at the top of the Pico trim, and I'm gonna add two seed beads. Sewing back through that 11 O in a circle, the two seed beads that I just added will sit right on top of that Pico trim. Sewing up through that 11, you can see it kind of turned it over so you could see it. Sewing up through that first of the 11s that I put on, I'm gonna add two more beads. So down through the bead on the side that you added. So sewing down through that second bead that I added in that first group of two up through the second bead that we just added on and two more beads on. You will see a little bit of thread exposed. I'm not going to worry about that because it's a pretty close color match. Two more beads go on and I go down the first bead from the previous row. When I'm on the side and coming out that first bead from the previous row and turn my needle up through the second bead that I put on on the last row. So if you don't know herringbone, you could just do a plain loop, but this is gonna give you a little bit of a herringbone uh, bail just to make it look a little bit nicer. Two beads go on. I go down the bead on the other side, and then back up through the second bead that I just put on. I'm giving nice tight pulls in between and pushing my hands down on those beads to make sure that they stay in place and not a lot of thread is exposed. Two beads go on, 
So down through the bead on the opposite side. So it's always going right to left. This bail you can make as long as you would like it to be. If it makes it easier for you to do the herringbone, you can constantly switch it in your hands. So that way you're always doing the same direction. Adding your beads, sewing down, back up through the bead there. If you need to, you can switch it in your hands now. Add those two beads, sewing down, and then back up through the second bead you added. Again, you can make this herringbone bale as long or as short as you want it to be. And you just need to make sure that it's gonna go over whatever clasp you're putting it on. Um, so if you're putting it on a leather, you wanna make sure not only that it fits around the leather, but whatever clasp is on the end or whatever findings on the end of your necklace. You could also make a nice herringbone chain for this. I have another video, um, the Sonoran Sundial, that goes over how to make a nice herringbone rope necklace to go on with that. You could check out that video. This would look really good on that as well. So I'm just doing a couple more passes of this straight herringbone. Again, the thread is going to sit a little bit exposed on the side, so when you're looking at it here, every other bead, you're going to have the thread exposed a little bit. Once I have it as long as I want it to be, I'll do one more. I'm going to stitch it together by connecting again to that middle pico bead. When I'm coming out to the top here, I'm going to get ready to add my next set of herringbone coming out the bottom there. Instead of adding more beads, I'm gonna to connect to that bale in the back there. On the same side, whichever side your thread is coming out of, you're gonna go through the first bead, that top bead, in that same on that same side towards the opposite side. That's gonna bring that thread bale, turn it towards the back, it'll bring it right around to the back there. I'm going to go then up the other side of that herringbone. So I came out the bead, went through that bead from the base, and out through the next one. And that's going to make a nice seamless herringbone bail there. To reinforce it, I'm just going to go back to the other side, sew down, so there's going to be thread exposed in the middle. Go back through that 11 one one more time. and then come around and reinforce the front as well. So I'm gonna go back to the front here, make sure I'm going up through that first bead, down through the bead on the other side, and back through that 11-0. Even if it's an 8-0, you wanna do this as well because at the bail portion of a pendant is where you're gonna get the most tension because that's where all the weight is hanging from. This pendant itself is not very heavy, so you don't have a lot of weight that is going to be demanding that really heavy bail. But that herringbone just gives a nice um, kind of simple yet elegant look to the pendant. Here it is with the 15 O's you can see versus the 11 O's. I actually like the look of the 11 O's better. Also here's a little bit of the variance when you're pulling together with those 8's versus the 11's and going up with the 11's on the side versus the 8's on the side. So it gives a little bit of a different look but the exact same technique, exact same count except for 2 here versus 1. So another variation that you can do on that pendant. To end the pendant and to end the thread, I'm going to go back to that stop bead. It gets tight in some spaces, but I'm going to sew back through my project that I don't see any of my thread exposed. And I'm going to go in and get back to right where that stop bead is. As I get back to that stop bead, again the key is you want to make sure you don't see any thread ends. I'm going to just tie the two beads or the two ends right together and then add a little bit of glue. So I'm going through the bead here, back through the other side there of the crescent, and that's going to bring that thread right next to the stop bead. If you can, you can sometimes pull the stop bead off. Um, sometimes you need to put a needle on this end and kind of re sew it out. I usually go in and see if I can kind of pull it out a little bit. Once it's pulled out a little bit, I can usually grab it with my hand and pull it off the thread, just like I did. 
These two thread ends then are right next to one another. Take my needle off. I'm going to tie those two ends together. You could really make this pendant um, sparkle and shine too by adding some two millimeter fire polished uh, rounds on the ends if you want a little bit of bling. They can take the place of some of your 8OC beads on the side. If you did want to add in some of those check glass or some two millimeter crystals, you can just use two C beads instead of three on either side of those because they'll take up a little bit more space. Once I have those knots in place, I'm going to go in with my super new glow and just glue a tiny bit down on that knot. If you don't like gluing, you may want to kind of weave your thread back through. Some people have different preferences both ways. Because this isn't actually um, something that's going to get a lot of attention, I'm just gluing it. And then I'm going to take my thread burner, burn down the edges of the thread. And to finish it off, as the glue dries, I'm going to burn those thread ends down flush with the knot, making sure that I'm not burning through the knot. Then you have your nice little pendant here finished. So the nebula pendant really can take on some different forms. You can do it reversible so you get different colors. You could actually wear this on either side. So it does a great look to it that you can play up um, the crescent beads and really create a number of these that will look different and have the same elements but actually take on their whole different look, whether it be with the 8s, with the 11s, and adding in different colors from the front to the back to make it reversible. So it does have a completely different look from one side to the other, which makes it nice and fun to work with, and also, again, to make it reversible. If you do want to make it reversible, again, you're going to need um, three different color of your uh, crescent beads to start out with, and those six will start your very first row on the back of the pendant. If you haven't gotten a chance to get any of the materials for this video, um, we have links back at the start of the video, or you can actually go below this video here to the little description box that tells you about the video and what's used, and there'll be little links underneath that show more button if you kind of click there. Little drop down will happen that you can get any of the materials from me online if you need them in order to create fun pieces like this, or for any of the other videos too that we do and we produce for you. You can also stay connected with us by subscribing to this YouTube channel to get regular updates on products like the Crescents or actually projects that we do with them. You can also interact with us on Facebook by joining our Facebook group and also staying track with us online uh, potomacbeads.com. The Facebook group you can request membership to show us what you're making and actually show us your designs, ask questions, and interact more with other beaters and people that love the art as well. And that is beading and jewelry making. Um, if you want to sign up for that as well, we'll have a little link for, for the group too. Thanks a lot for watching everyone and have a lot of fun playing with these fun crescents and taking on the shape that they create making this nebula pendant.